YouTube channel. Okay, so let's take a look at question 10.23 from the textbook. And it just says propose an efficient synthesis. So these are just your run of the mill synthesis problems. All right. So we we'll start out with A. And in A, we're going to take two methyl butane. And we want to convert that into uh, a, uh, this alkene. There we go. So we want to make this alkene. So this would be two methyl, one butene. So as I told you a few times already today, if you're starting out with an alkene, the only option you have is to treat it with bromine and light. And by now we know that the bromine atom is going to go into the most substituted position. So we're going to put our bromine atom right here. Now, if we want to make the Zaitsev of alkene, would we want to use an unhindered base or a hindered base? Could anybody help me out with that? Would I want to use a hindered base or an unhindered base? Exactly. Thanks, Sarah. I want to use a hindered base. So I'd use something like potassium T-butoxide. Oops. Butoxide like that. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem. The next one is in a similar vein. We want to take the same substrate, the two methyl one butane, and we want to convert that into the Zaitsev alkene. All right, so very, very similar problem. Again, the first step is going to have to be treatment with bromine and light, and that is going to brominate here. So you end up with two bromo, two methyl. Butane, and then to make the Zaitsev product, now we're going to treat it with an unhindered base. So to do that, we'd use something like sodium ethoxide or sodium methoxide. Either one is going to give us the Zaitsev product as the major product. Okay, let's do another one. This one involves a substitution reaction. This is uh, question C. We're going to start with cyclopentane, and we want to convert that into cyclopentane thiol is how you would name this compound. The name is neither here nor there, but we know that we could make the thiol from the alkyl halide, right? And then we would just use sodium um, uh, hydrosulfide to do this reaction. So I think that just by seeing that, you're probably thinking, well, that's pretty straightforward. All I have to do is treat the compound with bromine and light, and that is going to install a bromine. And then in the next step, I just treat it with sodium um, hydrosulfide. And you could put it in a polar aprotic solvent if you wanted to. You don't have to. It doesn't really bother me. But there are many polar aprotic solvents that we covered, DMSO, acetone. And if you remember this one, this is called acetonitrile, acetonitrile. And it is a polar aprotic solvent. So it's good for an SN2, and trial, good for an SN2 reaction. Okay, in the last part of 10.23, we're going to make a dihydroxyl compound. So again, this is question 10.23. This is part D. So we're taking cyclopentane again, and we want to convert it to this trans diol. So we have one hydroxyl going down and one hydroxyl coming up like this. And we know that we could make this from the alkene. We, in fact, have to have the alkene, and then we would treat it with MCPBA followed by aqueous acid. So the question becomes, well, how do I make the alkene? Well, we know the first step has to be bromination. So we're going to treat it with bromine and light. It's the only possibility for the first step. And now we have a secondary alkyl halide. If we want to um, prevent substitution and only get elimination, we're going to use a non-nucleophilic base. So we could use a hindered base. And you could use DBU or DBN, or you could use potassium T-butoxide, which students really like. And that would work completely. So that would give us cyclopentene. And then for the last step, this again is a reaction from way back in chapter eight, the alkenes chapter. The first step is to treat the compound with MCPBA. That makes the epoxide. And then we treat that with H3O plus aqueous acid, and that opens up the ring, and you would end up with this compound uh, plus its enantiomer. So you'd end up with this compound plus its enantiomer like that. Now, if you wanted to make the cis diol, 
So if you wanted to make this compound, so we've made the trans dial. If we wanted to make the cis dial, we would use the exact same strategy. So now if we want to make the cis dial, we're both hydroxyls are on the same face of the molecule, right? We know that we can do that from the alkene as well, but we would use a different dihydroxylation agent. We would use osmium tetroxide and uh, NMO as our co-oxidant. So we can literally copy all of this part here, okay? So I'm just gonna copy this and I'll just put it down here. Okay, like that. There we go. And so we know that, again, to do the very last step, all we have to do is treat the molecule with osmium tetroxide, so OSO4, and NMO as our co-oxidant. And so now we've designed a way to make the trans diol and a way to make the cis diol. Okay, the trans diol, of course, we end up with our racemic mixture. And when we make the, the cis diol, that's a meso compound. All right, there we go. So that's all of 10.23. The other question I wanted to look at with you is 10.52. So 10.52, so let me find it here. There we go. These are just some more synthesis problems. So if you look at 10.52 in the book, I want to make sure I read it, uh, the instructions correctly. Uh, it's in the integrated problems section. It just says propose an efficient synthesis for each of the following transformations. So 10.52. We'll just scribble it here and we'll say 10.52. And again, these are more synthesis problems. So just getting us, you know, to practice our reaction. So the first one is, I don't like this, nothing is easy in organic chemistry, but I would say straightforward. So we're going to take cyclopentane and we want to convert it to chlorocyclopentane. And we know that all of the hydrogens in A or in cyclopentane are equivalent. And so we could just treat this with chlorine and light, and this is the only isomer that we're going to get. There's no other possible isomer that we would get. Now, we have not learned a way to, um, to install an iodine directly. Right? We don't have any way to do that, but we know that we could um, make this compound if we had, let's say, the alkyl bromide. Right? We could take this compound and then treat it with sodium iodide and just do an SN2 with it, because iodide is a good nucleophile, weak base, and it's highly polarizable, so it's a great nucleophile. And so, you know, all we have to do in that case is just make the alkyl bromide. So we would treat that with bromine and light, and that would give us this compound. And then to do the SN2, we would just treat it with sodium iodide. If you want to choose a solvent, that would be good for an SN2 reaction. You could choose something like DMSO. Again, this is good for an SN2 reaction. And there you have it. All right, the next one is one that we looked at already. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it on C. It just says, how would you take cyclopentane and convert it to cyclopentane? We've covered this already today. So we would treat that with bromine and light. And the main idea is really making the double bond, right? You want to prevent any substitution. You only want elimination. And so you want a hindered base. So you could use DBN, you could use DBU, oops, DBU, or you could use potassium T-butoxide. Any one of those will give you the elimination reaction. All right, and, and, and again, all of them will suppress SN2. All right, 10.52, continuing on with 10.52. This is D, so in D, we're gonna take cyclohexene, this compound, and we want to convert it to the dibromo compound. And we have a trans dibromide plus the enantiomer. Could anybody tell me the conditions you would use for this? I know you know the answer, just checking. What would the conditions be for this reaction? Just plain old bromine, right, Kiana? Absolutely. No light required here, right? So no, no light required, right? This is not a radical mechanism. This is an ionic mechanism. This is covered in chapter eight. Okay, what if we started out with, with uh, cyclohexane and we wanted to do the same thing? Now I know you probably could 
do this reaction in your sleep, but let's just take a peek at it. If you wanted to do this, right, and you wanted to make a trans dibromide plus it's an antimer, well, in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to brominate it first, then you have to do an elimination reaction. So I'm just going to move this over here just to make sure I have enough room. The first thing you're going to do is brominate it with bromine and light, and that's going to give you bromocyclohexane. Then you're going to treat it with DBU or DBN, or you could treat it with potassium T-butoxide, and that will give you cyclohexane. And then, as we just said, you would treat it with bromine and no light required. All right.